Hi, I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Uh, this is all Frank's fault. Uh, Frank Sharp of uh, Fortress Defense Consulting. Uh, no, he didn't shoot me, but uh, he's the one that introduced me to uh, the amazing, fabulous Israeli battle dressing, otherwise known as the Izzy, um, and it's a great piece of kit. And uh, more recently, um, he's been posting about the importance of being prepared for trauma care, not just first aid, but trauma first aid, in the light of all the shootings we've had, whether it's the Westgate Mall shooting in Nairobi, or the Navy Yard shooting in Washington, D.C., or you know, time after time, the various workplace violence incidents. What you have to realize is when there's an active shooter situation, the police will cordon off the area and they will not allow the EMTs and other aid providers entry to the area until they think this area is safe. Now that could take 45 minutes to an hour, hour and a half. Now if you've got a serious wound, do you have 45 minutes? Do you have an hour? You may not. So it's important that you are prepared to treat yourself or those around you, whether it's family members or just innocent bystanders that you want to help. Now, when we've got a serious bleed like that, the first thing we need to do is make sure that nobody else gets hurt, that we're in a safe environment to work. Okay, with that out of the way, and nothing else to harm us, now if there was a, you know, a situation where it's not safe to stay here, then you need to evacuate. You know, whether it may be uh, chemicals or something along those lines, and it's not safe to be here. But uh, I've eliminated the threat. I'm gonna keep my head up and be aware of what's going on around me in case another threat pops up. But that's the first thing. Make sure you're working in a safe environment. The next thing we need to do is stop the bleeding. And the best way to do that is with a tourniquet. There's a number of good ones on the market right now. My two favorite are the CAT, the CAT, Combat, Combat Application Tourniquet, and the Soft TW. They're, they're pretty well equal. They'll run you just under $30, and they're well worth having. Now, just having the equipment doesn't do you any good. You need to practice with it. And one of the things, this is the soft TW, one of the things I like about it is that you can actually uh, undo it. And that's easier to get around your extremity that way. And then you can latch it up again, tighten it down. And then you have the windlass here. So tighten the windlass up. And yes, it's going to hurt. And tighten it up until the bleeding stops. There's a lock here, so you just put the windlass under that bar and it will hold it in place. Now, there's a lot of controversy about tourniquets and that they're going to damage your limb. The new thinking on tourniquets, as long as you use a good one and you pr apply it properly, um, you can leave it on for an hour to two hours without any issues. Um, when I say a good one, what you want is a band that's at least one and a half inches wide so that it doesn't cause tissue damage when you're cranking it down. Now, if it's been left on for a real long time, you want to leave it on. Um, the reason being that uh, the poisons can be built up in the, in the limb um, and that if you undo this, those poisons can be released back into the rest of your body and can cause shock. Uh, one way around that is to uh, release the um, tourniquet on a regular basis just to keep blood flow going. The, uh, the next thing we need to do is to apply a clotting agent, and there's a couple of different types. Um, I like quick clot, and quick clot comes in a couple of different varieties also. There's the powder, and there's the gauze. Now, the, uh, the, the powder, you just open up the container and pour it into the wound and it's effective. 
Uh, the problem with the uh, powder is that in windy environments, and, and we're having trouble with this uh, overseas when helicopters were landing uh, during medevacs, the, uh, the powder could be, or the, the, the granules could be thrown up into people's faces and get into the eyes, which could cause trouble. So Quick Clock came up with um, a gauze that has the, uh, the stuff inside of it so that uh, it, it's not free to uh, be windborne or airborne. So the next thing we want to do is um, get some quick clot into the wound and uh, we'll use the, uh, the gauze one and you're going to actually want to stick the gauze into the wound as far as you can. Yes, it's going to suck, but you need to get to the bleeding that's as far into the wound as possible, so stick the gauze down in there. Now, this brings me to another point. If you're treating yourself, the worry about giving yourself a disease by blood point pathogens isn't there. What you have is what you have. But if you're treating other people, you need to be careful of their blood because it can be carrying all sorts of nasty things. So one of the things you should be carrying is gloves if you're going to be treating somebody else so that you don't get sick yourself. One of Peter's rules is don't let one drowning person turn into two drowning people. If you're going to help people, that's fine, but don't do it at the risk of hurting yourself. Once you've got the gauze in, then we want to bandage it, and that's where the Israeli bandage comes in. I've got one open that we'll use. I, um, I recommend that if you get an Israeli bandage, uh, get a couple of them, open one up, and practice with it. So this is the one we use on range day when we're doing our, our practicing. When you open it up, it'll actually, um, it's, it's vacuum packed, vacuum sealed, and there's two containers inside of it. The first thing you'll come to is the big gauze pad, and on the opposite side of that is the pressure bar. So you're going to want to put the pressure bar directly over the wound, and then wrap the Israeli bandage around there. And this is elastic, and now you're going to come through the pressure bar, and then reverse the direction. Now, every wrap I put on that afterwards will push down on the pressure bar, putting direct pressure on the wound. And when you come to the end, we have the closure bar. It's just like the clips on a ballpoint pen. You can just stick it in, and it will stay in place. Now, if you don't happen to have a tourniquet, or maybe you're in a situation like the Boston bombing where you, you know, there's multiple injured people and you've used up your one tourniquet and you still have a couple of Israeli bandages, you can use this closure bar as a windlass to create a, um, a tourniquet. When we're doing tourniquets, you want to come above the wound at least two inches. So stick the, the um, closure bar in there, just twist it like you would any other windlass and then clip it off. Now, at this point, now that I've got the uh, clotting agent in there and I've got the Israeli bandage putting direct pressure on the wound, I can make the decision to try um, undoing the tourniquet and see what happens. And this is going to be a judgment call and it's going to be based on what you think is going to be the response time. If you think you can get to the hospital in the next 15 or 20 minutes, yeah, leave it on. But if you're worried about circulation and you think, you know, you may be sitting here for an hour or two or more, uh, maybe it'd be good to get that uh, tourniquet off and see if the clotting agent and the uh, Israeli bandage are holding. Now, equipment without knowledge is of limited benefit. So when you get these things, I recommend getting a couple of them and de dedicate one or two to your training system. So I have four or five of these tourniquets. I have the CATs, I have the soft TWs, um, and, and I have one that I use for training, and then a couple others are just in my, my kits. Same thing with the Israeli bandage. Now let's talk about kits a little bit. 
Um, and I'm not talking a first aid kit. I'm not talking about the snivel stuff of Band-Aids and Neosporin and tweezers and Benadryl, all of which is good to have. I'm talking about a kit that's strictly for severe trauma. If you've got a little boo-boo, it's not a big deal. Yeah, it hurts, it's annoying, but it's not life-threatening. And so do you really need to have that on you all the time? No, but what you do need to have on you all the time is the stuff for major trauma where minutes count. And if you don't take care of the wound right away, you may die or somebody else may die. I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there.